Happy Thursday, everybody. I'm here at Kennedy Space Center, and you can tell by this uh, countdown clock behind me, this is actually the historic countdown clock. This was here for all the Apollo missions, all the space shuttle missions, and then they took it down and they put up a new one out at the press site for where you all the press can view the launches. But, very historic clock indeed. We're here at the Kennedy Space Center. It's gonna be an exciting day. I'm gonna check out some space stuff. My question for you is, did you specifically shave your face to be the opposite of mine where you have no mustache but have a beard? No. Oh, was it but for you, Abraham Lincoln? It was very awkward because I was gonna do a top of the morning to you. And then you caught me and said, now you got me just doing this like non-vocalized. I like that. And I like that you're wearing green. You have a top of the morning beard. Yeah. A Mountain Dew. This is Adam the Woo. How'd you recognize me without my stash? I don't know. It was very difficult. It was, it was the, the hair. There's a little informational sign here and it says that the countdown clock is the second most viewed clock in the world, second only to Big Ben. Hey look kids, it's number two Big Ben. So like, they have this fountain here with JFK and they do a little show where it does the countdown and everything and the, the fountain changes colors, but I wish that they had picked a different quote from JFK. I wish they had picked, we choose to go to the moon and do those other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Now this is cool. So instead of solar panels, there's this little panel on the ground that generates energy from people walking on it. So every step that you take, look, you can see it like lighting up, but it's creating power. And this will be one of the newest technologies, renewable resources. You could make entire walkways out of this and driveways and places for cars to drive on. And it would just create power. We're heading in now, heading in through the rocket garden. And when we turn to our left, there is a heroes and legends hall that wasn't here the last time that we were here. Pretty awesome. I wonder who uh, these guys are. There's no signage or anything for this. I'd like to know who each individual is. Still very impressive every time that I see the rocket garden standing underneath rockets. And then I like that they gave like a little, a little artistic rendering of the fire coming out of the bottom of the rocket down here on the ground. Please note that portions of this presentation can be quite loud. Came into this room surrounded by pictures of famous people and astronauts. Got a couple of different representations of the different size rockets. And you can see the Apollo rockets were so big. Oh, is it happening? I think it's happening. Oh, look at this. How cool is that? That's a cool way of presenting this type of stuff. Wow. There's a robot back there. Wow. What's happening back here? It's a, a school room. So now I understand a little bit more of the theming in this room. It's all about heroes. And so these are different heroes. We're starting to get some crazy lighting effects going on in here. This is awesome. That little 3D movie experience was amazing. Couldn't show it to you guys because it was in 3D, so you guys wouldn't have been able to pull it up. Would have been all blurry, but kind of went through all of the different heroes, like big names that have gone up into space and like kind of gave interviews to them. And like really inspirational stuff. It was very cool. Did spend a lot of time with these particular spacecrafts, Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo. Speaking of Mercury, wow. This is the Sigma 7 capsule. You can see inside of it where they would sit. I'm gonna try to get over and see the other side. Get a little bit of a better view. See how tight it is in there? Look at all those switches and cords and cables and all kinds of stuff. Just imagine there were people sitting in there too. Here inside of the rocket, you can see some of the different computers and electronics that were used to control all of the rocket power inside of this rocket. This sign here says that this was a rocket that was handpicked by Werner von Braun, and in 2004, handwritten notes were found inscribed on the interior. We have all of these different little pods that have different things written on the top, so we're gonna go inside the inspired one and see what kind of things inspired astronauts to become astronauts. So like Flash Gordon stuff, Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers. Buck Rogers comic book. This is Buzz Aldrin's Camp Trout Lake Pennant and Buzz Aldrin's varsity letter. One of the things that showed that they were curious, I think this is one of the most interesting things, is that this is Bob Cabana's home-built crystal diode radio. 
And I'm assuming that Bob Cabana was a astronaut. Let's find out. There he is, Bob Cabana, astronaut from STS 41, 53, 65, and 88. Just above the Curious booth, you can see a little bit better the inside of the rocket and all of the different wiring that they have inside of there that helps make the rocket go. That is really neat. Wow. Astronauts gotta be tenacious. That's for darn sure. Ooh, there's a knife here. This is Derek Slayton's Mercury Survival Knife. Wow. And here is Deke Slayton's Apollo ID badge. Deke Slayton's military cap. Deke Slayton's World War II bomber jacket. Holy macaroni. Here is a copy of Buzz Aldrin's report card. Looks like he got a B in shop class. Oh, he got a B in French class too. Here's John Glenn's orbit map. And I believe this is what he had in space where he drew out where he was orbiting around the Earth as he was orbiting it. Wow. There's a bunch of fighter pilot helmets from different astronauts when they were in the Air Force or the Navy or the Marines. Here's Alan Shepard's helmet. How cool is that? I don't know if this is a recreation or the actual control center that was used for the Mercury missions. This looks like the actual stuff that was in Mission Control. Yes, at these very consoles. So these are the actual consoles from Mercury Mission Control. Here's the NASA meatball from outside of Mercury Mission Control Center. Look at that, you can tell that it was all hand painted. This is so cool. This is the spacesuit worn by Gus Grissom during the suborbital flight in 1961. So he didn't actually go into space in this, but he wore it almost all the way to space. This is the last thing that unplugged itself from the spacecraft before it lifted off. Wow! Holy cow, you're looking at the bottom of Gemini 9A and you can see all of the burn marks from re-entry. And then if we go around the other side, you can see the rest of the capsule. And there's a little panel so you can see inside and see what the astronauts sat in and how tight it was in there and all the different controls that they had to do and push and all the buttons and stuff. This particular capsule, they were inside of it for two weeks in this tight of a space. This is a replica of the plaque that was left on the moon by the Apollo 11 mission. That's really neat. It of course is now whited out from all of the crazy radiation in space, but this is what it would look like the day they set it on the moon. It looks like the Boy Scouts was a big theme in astronauts, so a lot of astronauts were Boy Scouts. And then also right here we've got Wally Shira's NASA jacket, and then this is my favorite part. Here's his little pocket harmonica. We have one of those on our keys at home. Just coming out of the Heroes and Legends part and attached is the Astronaut Hall of Fame. Let's have a look in there. There's a giant statue of Alan Shepard, the first American in space. And then all along the wall are these portraits of all of the astronauts and what missions they flew in the patches underneath. Man. This is so cool. Here we've got a portrait of the two astronauts that are being inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. Here is a portrait of the engraving that's on the outside of the building. Still no signage here, but I have a feeling it's an engraving of the Mercury 7, the original Mercury 7 astronauts with the US Air Force F-106 Delta Dart. So, Scott Carpenter, Gordon Cooper Jr., John Glenn, Virgil, Gus Grissom, uh, Wally Shira, Alan Shepard, and Deke Slayton. Well, this is neat. You can pick somebody to take a photo with. Like if I want to take a picture with Alan Shepard. Oh, there he is. And then you can go up and take a selfie with him. Here's Adam the Woo with Alan Shepard. Out here walking through the astronaut garden and we kind of went over a bunch of these different rockets the last time we were out here. So I'll put a link up in this corner for you guys to click on and view the last time that we were out here. Still though, this is always impressive to me. This is an Apollo engine. You can see there's a person standing here. The size of this thing is massive. Of course, the Saturn I, the massive rocket. Still one of the most interesting things is that this is not gonna be the biggest rocket that we see today, even though it is gigantic. Still gonna see a bigger one later. It's a replica of the Orion capsule spinning around. Got pictures of people inside of it right there too. There's a robot out here doing some window shopping. This is amazing. Oh, here he comes. Oh, greetings. 
Oh. Oh. Yes. I like that he's just like wheeling back and forth. It's a Mars rover made entirely out of Legos. This is either spirit or opportunity, but they're they're twin robots, so I don't know which one this one is in particular. It's either spirit or opportunity. Here's the Northrop T-83 Talon. Do you have the need for speed? It's a jet trainer aircraft. Twin engine, high altitude, supersonic jet trainer aircraft. All the way on the far side of the property, and there are no other guests over here aside from me and Adam. And we are heading up to this which is the Astronaut Memorial. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that this is visible from space. Here it is, the Astronaut Memorial, memorializing all of the fallen astronauts. Each black tile has the different names of all the people who have given their lives for the space exploration. And then we can see here, these are all of the people that are listed behind me. Of course, Challenger in Columbia, Apollo 1, T-38. He died in a commercial plane an X-15 experimental plane, and an F-104. But there are two astronauts on this wall, Theodore Freeman and Clifton Williams Jr., who are not represented on this memorial. Theodore Freeman is actually very important to space travel. He died in a T-38 jet crash, marking the first fatality among the NASA astronaut corps, and that right there is the T-38. Clifton C. Williams Jr. also died in a T-38 crash. I don't know if it was the same crash or if it was a different one, because usually when it's the same, they put them all on the same tile. I just want to know where I can buy one of these. It's an umbrella with solar panels on top, and then it's got little USB plugs down here on the bottom for you to plug your phone in and charge up. Heading on a bus tour to restricted area access. We're on the tour, the bus tour, and she's just driving, she's talking very quietly. She saw a gator over here. Everybody stood up and she's like, all right, that concludes the tour. We saw a gator. There's a bald eagle's nest up in there. Just driving past the VIB where they assembled all of the Saturn rockets, the space shuttle, and they will assemble the SLS, the space launch system. Just passing by one of the crawlers. It's kind of hard to see behind the buildings there, but that's what they use to transport the space shuttle out to the pad, and that's what they will use to transport the SLS out to the pad. Just passing by a mobile launch platform. Basically, the crawler goes underneath that, lifts up the whole platform, and then transports the platform and the rocket out to the launch pad, places it down, and then the rocket launches from atop of this. The mobile launch platform that I just showed you was from the space shuttle. This one is what they're modifying to be used with the SLS system. Here's a mobile launch platform actually sitting on top of a crawler right now. Here's the launch pad that SpaceX has converted. They've already launched three missions from 39A, the now converted 39A from SpaceX. The next launch will be April the 30th, so that's coming up very soon. We're passing around the backside of Launch Complex 39A. This is the one that SpaceX is currently using. These are sideburn deflectors. These are what used to redirect all of the heat and all of the power coming out of the bottom of a rocket during a rocket launch. We're if inside of the mission control for Apollo 8. Oh, the lights just turned on. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8. Right here, where it actually happened. with the epic music for the big reveal and start to see it. The bathroom. The bathroom. There it is. That is a big old rocket. And you can see it goes all the way down. This is a Saturn rocket. I believe it was the Apollo 8 mission that this is from. There is a retired NASA engineer here just answering questions. Standing underneath this gigantic rocket 
It is really impressive how big this thing is. It's still so impressive seeing all of the different pipes and hoses and wires that they had to run to get this rocket off the ground. Wow. That is so impressive. There's a small, I say small, it's actually kind of a really big model of the Saturn down here. And it kind of goes and shows like here's the engines, here this was a fuel tank, and then you get up to the next stage that has another fuel tank. So this first stage would fire, get it to a certain point, and then it would separate, and then the second stage would fire. And then the third stage here would fire after this one runs out of fuel. And this is where the lunar lander was. And then this command module here is where the astronauts stayed most of the time here at the very tip. And this is also what they landed back to Earth in. This is the control module up here where they would like stay most of the time. And then this is where the lunar lander would sit. So let's see if we can see inside of there and see what it looks like. Can't see all the way inside of there, but we can see that it is wide open in there. Not 100% sure, but I believe that this lunar rover was just put together for display from spare parts of lunar rovers that never actually made it to the moon because we've never brought a lunar rover back from the moon. Everyone that we've ever taken just stays up there. We just came in and we can see the Apollo 14 capsule. So this capsule has carried people into space. Wow, and you can see inside of it you can see one of the chairs where people were sitting. Wow. So three people would fit in this capsule. The sign over here says that this capsule is named the Kitty Hawk. It was crafted with more than 2 million parts, nearly 15 miles of wire, a control panel with 24 instruments, 566 switches, 40 indicators, and 71 lights. It would journey 500,000 miles before it safely delivered the crew back home with a cargo of more than 100 pounds of moon rocks. Look at all the burning from these thrusters and then from reentry back in to Earth's atmosphere. Here's Alan Shepard's spacesuit from Apollo 14 from 1971. And that is the capsule from Apollo 14. All of the rocket from here down is the actual rocket. This is not the actual command module. The actual command module is right here from the rocket. So this is the real one, and this is just a representation of the real one up here. Kind of see inside of it a little bit. No seats or anything in there currently. It looks like they've taken all that out. Do you guys remember outside on the bus tour, we showed you guys the crawler that transports the space shuttle or any rocket out to the pad? Here are two of its treads. Massive. Here is the RV that they used to use to transport astronauts out to the pad. Just trying to figure out what kind of RV this was based off of. Is this like a Chevy? I think, it, let's go look at the steering wheel. It says something in the middle of the steering wheel there. The brand name, I just can't see what it is. I don't know. Let me, leave me a comment and let me know if you guys can tell what kind of vehicle this is, what brand it is. Here's the inside area where they would transport the astronauts. They'd be sitting in here, ready to go out to the launch pad get rocketed into space. One last look at this giant rocket before we head out and head back to the main complex. Have a look for Atlantis. It's only a model. One last stop and that is the space shuttle Atlantis is on display here. Here is a model of the solid rocket boosters in the external fuel tank, but inside is the actual Atlantis, the one that flew the very last space shuttle mission. So the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex actually invited us out here today, and I just met with the social media manager, and she gave us some astronaut ice cream. I am so excited to eat this because this is one of my childhood favorites. Every time that I would come to the Kennedy Space Center as a child, I would always ask my mom to buy me this stuff from the gift shop. Is it Neapolitan? I don't know. Neo How do you pronounce it? How do you pronounce Neapolitan? All right. Let's do it at the same time. I'm going to grab this gigantic chocolate piece. Okay. Look at the size this. of this piece. Here we go. You ready? Count of three. One, on two. On three? On, on three. Okay. One, two. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. I, it tastes like chocolate. I love ice cream. I love Oh my gosh, that's cream. really good. I'm going to have this delicious. piece of strawberry now. Strawberry? No, I want, I want vanilla now. It's actually really good. That's delicious. Oh my gosh, this is tasty. Wow. Thirsty and dehydrated. No, we need to have some astronaut. Do they have water. dried water? Yeah. Right? That's just air. No, I'm just asking. You just breathe heavily. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, you know what? It's good. It's good. My, my, my thirst has been quenched. The videos here are some of the most inspirational things that I have ever seen in my life. The president's message said you go forward this morning on a daring enterprise and you carry the hopes and prayers of all Americans with you. And astronaut John Young, the commander of the mission, replied, that's a right fine speech. We sure appreciate it. that we learned on the bus tour, when Atlantis was being installed in this position, all of the directors wanted it to be at 45 degrees, and the guy who was in charge of hanging it said, no, what do you say we hang it at 43.21? So it was like 4321 liftoff. Still really blows my mind that this is an actual space shuttle that went into space. I know that we've been looking at like actual rockets and everything, but the space shuttle is the thing that I remember watching launch most often and land most often as a child and growing up. So I have a deep rooted feelings towards this spacecraft. When you think of the space shuttle opening her payload doors and releasing large satellites like the Hubble Space Telescope, which there's a replica of over there, which is huge and that could fit inside of here. They also deployed teeny tiny satellites like this one. I don't know what this one was. It's called a Pico satellite. One of the smallest satellites launch yet it contained all of the systems of large satellites. Here is one of the engines from the actual space shuttle. Not from the rocket boosters, but from the shuttle itself. So this engine would be one of those cones right there. This is a really cool angle of Atlantis from underneath where you can see all of the tiles and stuff like that. It uses a heat shield to protect the inside of the space shuttle during re-entry. These are the foam silica tiles. Super lightweight and super heat resistant. There's a slide. I think Adam and I are gonna race. Okay, you say go. You have to take your shoes off. Whoa, whoa we got it. Oh, are you going? Go, go, go. Here we go. Oh, go, he's go, beating go, me. Go, go, go. Oh, woohoo! That was actually Who really won? fun. Who won? You did because you cheated. Fair enough. We're gonna rematch. Video. Oh, no! <laughs> I win! I just got tracker. <laughs> Ow. It just shocked the heck out of me. There's some mirrors here so that you can see the other side of Atlantis. It looks like inside of this wall, there's a time capsule to be opened in 2061, 50 years after it was encased inside of the wall here. So that means that this time capsule was placed into the wall in 2011. It's pretty neat. My goodness, I just looked up and Atlantis above my head is truly breathtaking. It is so big. There's a section over here that I haven't been into before called Forever Remembered. Let's go see, it's all about the Columbia and Challenger tragedies. This side is the Challenger side and it has different artifacts and personal belongings of the different people who were on the Challenger. Here's Ronald E. McNair's. He has a samurai sword and his black belt uniform. And then also a picture of him playing saxophone in space. Here is Krista McAlfee and she was the teacher. And you can see she's got teacher in space patch, and then a yearbook, and it shows a picture of her here, and then a book about Concord, New Hampshire, her hometown. And then on this side is the Columbia tragedy. And you can see here is Rick Husband's Boy Scouts uniform and his cowboy boots. William C. McCool's Canon camera Wow. And then there's his shoes. You got Michael Anderson's Boy Scouts of America uniform, and then his Star Trek lunchbox that he used as a child. This is a quote from Ronald Reagan after the Challenger exploded. This is what he said. Then we turn the corner and here is a piece of the Challenger. And then if we turn to our right, here are the cockpit windows from Columbia but just coming up real close and looking at this, just a huge chunk of the Challenger. It's 
it's crazy because I was at school when this happened. I was outside and I remember it happening. Here's a mock-up of our next space telescope that we're gonna send up. This is the James Webb Space Telescope. Here's another RV that they would bring the astronauts out to the launch pad in, but this is an Airstream. Like we can very obviously see what brand this is, but here's the thing. It looks a lot like an Airstream trailer, I've never seen an Airstream RV on the road. These are specialty NASA issued socks. This is what all the astronauts wore into space. These were preferred, this color. When I was younger, I feel like my mom had one of these and now I kind of want one. It's like a nostalgia thing, but it's a hydration unit. Okay. I like that. Now, although these are just models, they do have the bolts down here on the bottom and these bolts actually bolted the solid rocket boosters down to the pad and moments before launch they have an explosive charge in them and they explode and separate the solid rocket boosters from the launch pad. There's a rocket fuel truck outside and instead of dipping dots they sell space dots. And that's going to do it for us from the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. Wow, this trip was amazing. There was a lot of stuff that I hadn't seen before and a lot of stuff that I really enjoyed seeing, like some of the Challenger stuff, and I always love seeing Atlantis. But we are off and I will see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.